Why can't we live right here, like this, all the time? You know, I ask myself the same thing, grandson, every day. Every day. I think the scenes between John Dutton and Tate are really what Yellowstone is about. Tate can see how this ranch sort of runs so that he can keep it in the family. It's looking like he might be our last hope for that. The land is everything to him. You take something that's five generations old and it can continue to look the way it is. You work for that. <laughs> oh, well, that's exactly how you do it. Cool if I ride with you, I want to see my kid. So Taylor asked me if I knew how to ride at the beginning of the season. I told him yes and that I'd learn later. And he was like, well, you got to learn now. And then the next episode, I was riding. I won't fall off. She was just starting to get comfortable on the horses. Taylor wrote the script where Kelsey took my horse. Well, it's my horse. We don't have time for this shit. My name is Sled Reynolds, and I'm a wrangler, an animal trainer. Taylor has a pretty good idea about what cowboys are supposed to be. Taylor called me and says, will you get on a bucking horse? And I had to remind him that I was 40. Got it, Jake. I said, yeah, if I can pick it. So, you know, that was pretty fun. It was up in the field. Oh, now that looks fun. I think all of us love working on this. Come here, you little devil. It's so much fun. You really feel like you're making movies. I think Kelsey did good. You know, the first take, my horse went bucking right into him. You know, I couldn't really control him. And she just backed her horse up and looked really good. So you're really learning with the best of the best. And hopefully, the editing is great. <laughs> What we try to do is have horses that kind of do a little bit of everything. Kelsey, she'd been down to the barn lately riding cutter, something that not everybody gets to do. It's been a good opportunity, but I think they're riding really well and advancing. They're going to take the stunt guys out of business. <laughs> Monica is always trying to get back to their beginning in a way, where it was just Casey and Tate. Casey and Monica really work together this season in a beautiful way to take care of Tate. I need a start without him. It's a dream come true for Casey, out in nature, kind of living this lifestyle that he grew up with and that he loves and is part of his legacy. The campground allows for them to be in this dream world all together, away from these incredible challenges that they've had to face and overcome. It's simple, and it's about the family. And to have her kind of accept it and, and, and want to be there for it and actually fall in love with it, too, I think it's just, he's over the moon. Luke and I really root for these characters. To see the scripts come in and for them to be happy is such a relief. <laughs> We're happy, too. But for a minute, they're at the camp. They're watching the sunrise. Things seem simple. They're together. It's sort of an exhale. Beth doesn't go down to the camp because she's still working, but she does go visit Rip. Rip and Beth are such a fascinating couple because it is, in a lot of way, everyone's fantasy of a couple. Those scenes always, for me, were like, wow, this is the year that I'm excited about for Beth and I. That opening of her heart has been one of the most beautiful things for me to play this year. And the roles are so juxtaposed between the two of them. Rip is the most masculine guy on the planet who does these very, what would be traditionally thought of as feminine and gentle things for her, and she does these very masculine things. There's a lovely scene where Rip is making Beth breakfast. I mean, they're the, my favorite scenes of the year. But she doesn't know how to be vulnerable in a t-shirt and no makeup and walking downstairs and someone being nice to her. And she resists it. It was one of the most difficult scenes and gorgeous scenes to play because um, she allows herself in that moment to, to feel vulnerable. And I don't think I've seen Beth vulnerable ever. And I set it down and she's eating it and I'm staring at her and it's, you know, a, a bit uncomfortable when you're eating breakfast and somebody's staring at you, but it's very lovingly and she just starts getting emotional, and we both are just are staring at it, and we're just talking with our eyes, and it's beautiful. It doesn't take away her femininity, and it doesn't weaken his masculinity. It's a really unique, beautiful relationship. You know, working with Kelly is such a pleasure, but also the writing, you know, again, the ability to play silence. <laughs> you know, she's great at it. You know, I, I love breathing with her on screen, and the scenes that Taylor wrote are just exceptional. 
And I love playing on the, the notion of how should this really ignorant, uneducated brute of a man interact with a woman who is an intellectual viper. We saw in season two how much of a survivor she is, but actually it's the emotional scars, I think, that take a, a longer time to heal. I don't think Rip even sees the bruises. She just thinks she's just amazing. Regarding just storytelling, it can't all be this high octane drama. And I think the audience and the characters needed a breath for a second. First, we're going to dance. You need to put a pause on it and really get a, emotionally invested. And I hope, I know that the, the audience loves to see that in, in Beth and Rip. So they're going to see a lot more of it this year. John Dutton never lets anything go. <laughs> if you wrong him, he will always remember it and you'll always be paying for it, especially if you're close to him. Jamie knows he betrayed John and there's a very slim pathway back. John decides to resign as the livestock commissioner and decides to give the opportunity to Jamie, which is a complete surprise and one that Jamie knows is probably coming with some favor or something awful attached, but it's a way out of the bunkhouse. It's a way back into his normal life. It's a way back into influence with John. As soon as he gets it and he gets in the office and the first decision he has to make, it um, turns out awful. Holy shit. What's your name? Fire. What's that? Teeter is a character that you just can't prepare for. Teeter is a fantastic character in the sense that she's a badass, and I hire her based on that. Teeter is the new addition to the bunkhouse. There was a line thrown around that if they were going to get a girl, she needed to be ugly or mean. You know what I mean? Mean or ugly? Yes, sir. And then they saw me somehow, and they said, perfect. Jennifer is so committed to Teeter. When I saw her the first time, I was like, oh, she's crazy. And I've been fucking bawling and dragging since I could bounce piss up her up. The first scene that you meet, Teeter. Yeah, what the fuck did she say? It's phonetically written, and I justified in my head that she just speaks the way her family speaks. You skunk hard motherfucker. She just called me a motherfucker. I think that's Taylor after about 10 bottles of wine. You understood that, didn't you, you bow-legged bastard? There's a great scene between Lloyd and I where she's babbling on about whatever the hell she's talking about. And then we're trying to figure out whether it's Spanish. And I'm like, no, 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 it's Texan. Ain't Texan? That's a gibberish. It's a great moment between the two of us. It brings levity to the show, which, as you know, it needs it. She's perfect. Trust me. All right. As I'm walking away, taking her to the bar, I go, well, it's going to be entertaining anyway. We're equal opportunity here at Yellowstone. When I started watching the show, I immediately became a fan. But I was a big fan of Taylor's. He's got his finger on the pulse of, like, the human heart. That's how we used to do it. Mm. Yeah, well, never should have stopped. It's very Shakespearean. It's very Greek tragedy set in the West. I love the stories. I loved the idea of what I got to do. There was something so freeing to me about Teeter's physicality. But yeah, I feel like she's definitely in her me. Hey, her. I can't imagine doing it any other way.